Bodyscapes explores the use of the body to map knowledge. We understand and organize our knowledge about the world according to our body, because that's what we know, and that's what's close to us. So the body and its analogy with the landscape and nature and the cosmos is the subject of this exhibition. Here we're looking at Michael Druk's work of the 1970s, a conceptual artwork, where he creates the topography of his life, occupied territory, right Druk's, left Druk's, translating a three-dimensional landscape of a life into a two-dimensional image. Also in the field of mysticism, we see the organization of knowledge according to the human body. Micha Ullmann creates a dining table made out of vessels and plates that are interconnected. The attributes of God are organized in the Sephirotic tree, the emanations of God in the world. So a three-dimensional contemporary artwork is brought together with the original Sephirotic tree from the museum's collection. 140 works in a variety of media, paintings, sculpture, drawings, photography, multimedia artworks from the museum's collection and loans from museums and private collections abroad. So mysticism, cartography, and even the human psyche is mapped. Here, Freud creates a topographical model of the psyche, the id, the ego, and the superego, presented as a kind of iceberg that emerges from the earth. The lunar and solar cycles in Jewish calendars mapped on the palm of a hand. The body presented as a house in Hebrew literature of the 18th century. And of course, anatomy is the most obvious example. The vascular system in a Persian drawing of the 18th century. And then more abstract fields such as Tantra, the chakras mapped along the body in a manner that's very similar to the Sephirotic tree in Jewish mysticism, or acupuncture points in a Chinese drawing of the 17th century. A very monumental work of the exhibition is Jenny Saville's self-portrait, where she shows herself in large and up close with markings of liposuction marked and carved into the body. She is protesting against the female ideal, the ideal body. She shows the fat, the hair, the veins, and she enriches the texture of the, of the canvas with gravel and pieces from nature itself. The second section of the exhibition is called Human Proportions. We see ourselves as the epicenter of the universe. It's a very humanic or humanistic approach. And Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man is a starting point for many artists in the exhibition. We see a white male figure doubled and circumscribed in a circle, which is the cosmos, and a square, which is the world of geometry. And the proportions of the human body, the ideal proportions, which appear in a Roman drawing and in Maplethorpe's depiction of Agito, one of his models. And here he is creating his own comment to the Vitruvian man. Here it's the black homosexual man turned around. So comments on Leonardo da Vinci, it influenced Le Corbusier who created the modular man, a measurement for architecture or in the world of choreography, we have drawings of Oskar Schlemmer and Rudolf von Laban and Noe Schkoll. So the Vitruvian man became a model for many artists, such as Antony Gormley, who creates this laying man. He uses his own body to sculpt his works. He clads his own body in sheets of lead. Lead is both poisonous and protective. We use it to guard ourselves from radioactivity, but it's also poisonous and used uh, in coffins. So this prostrate figure is an alternative to the crucifixion. 
And we have the comment of the Palestinian female artist, Samar Shihadi, who like Leonardo du duplicates this time a female form. One of them is veiled and in a cross-like position, and one of them is subjugated to interrogation, perhaps. And here she is protesting against the limitation or policing of women in Muslim society. The third section of the exhibition looks at the analogies between the contours of the body and the textures of the body and those of nature. We have analogies between the female body and the flora and fauna in works of Louise Bourgeois, Georgia O'Keeffe, and the contemporary African artist Wangechi Mutu. So women were identified with nature already from prehistoric times. And I've collected from the museum's collection prehistoric fer fertility figurines and figurines from the Americas and from our area. And we see the enlargement of the fertility uh, organs. We see the heavy thighs, the enlarged breasts. And the woman is reduced to her bare minimal features until it becomes just a pubic triangle that represents woman. And next to her, a pebble which represents man, just with the slits of the eye and the dot of the nose. And that minimalism from prehistoric times finds its way into minimalist art of the 1970s. We're looking at a felt sculpture by Robert Morris that encompasses the viewer and is made through the interaction of the visitor with the sculpture in space. In Israeli art, from the 1960s onwards, we also have this identification of the female body with the landscape. And Michael Gross, in the 1980s, uses plywood and a piece of wood to create this female nude, emphasizing the relationship between nature and the female form. His colleague, Ori Reisman, merges two motifs that were very important to him the landscape or the mountain, and the female form. So we're in the Galilee, and we're looking at a mountain that is also a, a, a woman's body. And in Hebrew, we say moledet, which is the homeland. So the land is the one that gives birth, that is fertile. And it's a parallelism between the fertility of the land and the creativity of the artist. This same merging of landscape and the female body is called biomorphism and appears also in the work of Henry Moore. Here in one of his reclining nudes, it becomes an abstract form that's eaten away by water or wind. And you can remember yourself as a child entering these kinds of sculptures. It invites participation. Jean Arp, the surrealist, merges a sheaf of wheat and the female form. We see the swelling buttocks and the turn of the head. And it's seen on the backdrop of a multi-part photograph by the Chinese artist Liu Wei. We see what looks like a landscape, but is actually people bending over with their hairy buttocks and with mosquitoes biting them. It looks like a traditional ink drawing, but it's actually a contemporary photograph full of humor. The last section of the exhibition is called Body of Work. Usually a body of work is a group of works by an artist that is brought together. But here the body becomes the creative tool. So we have the movement through the exhibition from maps in the shape of bodies to bodies that are mapping themselves. They become the creative tool. Kang Shin adds one meter to an anonymous mountain piling his artist friends to add this one meter. Or Spencer Tunick, who creates installations also in the Dead Sea and other places in the world by inviting people to disrobe and create a landscape out of themselves. Shani Reches uses her own body to create her ceramic vessels, which are made of multicolored clay. So the exhibition invites you to a, an interactive dance between the body and the brain. And I hope you, you can experience this exhibition yourself after the reopening of the museum.